The book is about desire and uh, what happens after desire goes away. And there's a, a renewed or re a return of, of the of a recognition of beauty. Um, it's almost as though desire was an obstacle to seeing beauty. And it's also about the oppressiveness of mind, of thinking. That is that there seems, seems a conflict between thinking and being. And it's about buses. There are buses all through the book uh, and bus drivers. And there's even one point where a bus takes the role of the muse. And it's about death. So it's about beauty, the mind, buses, and death. George Stanley, I think of as a great Democrat and as someone whose practice is citizenship, who cares deeply about where he lives, the city that he lives in, and also the block that he lives on and the streets that he walks and that he, along which he rides on the bus. I mention these things, walking, looking, riding, because they're in his poems. The language is straightforward, but they're so rich and thoughtful. Uh, and that comes from his walking and watching and listening and observing and thinking and imagining the city that he would like to live in and seeing parts of it from time to time. I'm a modernist, as almost all poets of the past century have been. Modernism means uh, free verse, freedom from fixed poetic forms, and it means ordinary language, as Wordsworth introduced into English and William Carlos Williams into American poetry, and it means a rejection of sentimentality. Towards the end of the 70s, um, my close friend, the Irish-American poet James Liddy, who died a few years ago, introduced me to the poetry of Patrick Kavanaugh, and I was influenced by Kavanaugh's poetry for a, quite a while. The bus, for him, is really a ride into the present, and that present is greatly important to him, and that's why he reports back to us. He reports to us from his walks and his his, uh, his bus riding, and he reports through his, these marvelous poems. I look in the windows of the restaurants to find the character that he calls in one of the poems in his new book, a character he calls Beauty, thinking, is this the window that George saw beauty in? Is that the window he saw beauty in? And I don't know if it's a real window. I suspect it might be. George has activated that part of Broadway for me. I can't go there without imagining the poet George Stanley bringing it to us through his poems. In the same way that if I go to certain parts of New York, I think of Walt Whitman or I think of Herman Melville. Well, I, it, 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 it comes off of a trip to, to Moscow I made about 20 years ago, and I became interested in the Russian language and began reading some Russian poetry and uh, recognized that Akhmatova and the other poets of her group, like Osip Mandelstam, uh, they called their group Acmeism. Acmeism mean, meaning uh, to, to the highest. The Acme is the highest. That was their aim. But they also believed in uh, referential clarity, meaning it's clear what the poem is about. And so Acmeism was an early form of aboutism. But I think all of it can be subsumed under the heading of realism. Uh, like the California poet Joshua Clover says, it always comes back to the ordinary. Um, art, whether it be uh, painting or, or other forms of art or poetry, half has to return to the real world. And the way that he approaches the world, I think, is urging us forward to consider beauty and equality as being something like the same thing.